let's uh, look at the process creation um, in Unix uh, using the system called a system call fork. Uh, so for example, why do we need to create uh, new processes? Well, uh, this could be done to increase CPU utilization. Uh, so if we have uh, space in the memory to create more processes, uh, we could do that using a system called in Unix, it is fork. So fork is a Unix system call for creating processes. Um, a process executes fork to create a child process. So now we have the concept of parent and child process. Parent referring to the main process in which we start the, we call the fork system call, which in turn creates a child process. So the original process is now called the parent process and the spawn or the clone is called the child process. So the child is identical to the parent with one exception. Only the return code is going to be different. So that their process IDs are going to be different, which means that the return value or the return code for the child process is going to be different from the return code or return value of uh, the parent process. So for example, the return code of the child process is going to be zero and the return code of the parent process is going to be the process ID of the child it just created. And we'll take a look at some examples to clarify that point. But note that there are now going to be two processes and they have to be distinguished by a process ID, which is an integer. Um, so for a child, we are saying that it's uh, process ID, the return code is going to be zero. However, uh, the return code for the parent process is going to be the process ID of the child process it created. Um, parent and child may execute concurrently or parent may wait for the child's completion. So sometimes if the parent has nothing to do, it may remove itself from the ready queue by using the wait system call. So just it just waits for uh, the child to terminate uh, or it can just run concurrently with the child process. So both child and process, uh, child and parent processes executing at the same time. Um, child may be a duplicate of the parent, so a, a perfect clone, which means that the same program and data um, or it may be a new program by using the system called exec we can uh, we can have a new program uh, in the child process. So we'll take a look at uh, more examples in just a bit. Um, now let's see if we start here all the way to the left. We are right now executing a process which has a process ID of X. So let's say our X is say 236. So some process, some uh, integer value I have ass assigned uh, the parent process. So this is my parent process here. And it is right now executing and say uh, at some uh, time uh, the parent process uh, has a fork system call. Uh, so there's a code i equals fork. Uh, notice there are no arguments for the system call here. And once that fork system call uh, uh, is executed in the parent process, we get two clones. So we get two uh, copies of the same process. We get the parent process indicated by the process uh, at the bottom, and we also get a child process indicated by the circle at, at the top. Now notice the differences here. I is essentially the return value of the fork system call. And in the parent process, I is going to return the value over here, which is Y. And we claimed earlier that this is going to be the process ID of child. However, if you look at the child process here, the process ID, now it's, an, it's a new process ID, Y, but the return value is zero. So the return value for the fork system call in the child is zero. However, the new process ID of the child is now Y, which is 
the return value of the fork system call in the parent process. So that's where it gets it from. So two processes, uh, unique process IDs. For the parent, it was X. For the uh, child, it was Y. So say 2, 5, 47. It doesn't really matter. Um, however, the return value of fork system call in the parent was uh, the process ID of the child. However, the return value of the folk system call in the child was zero, indicating that that's a child process. So that is because it's a child process. Okay, so now that we have seen uh, these things, let's uh, move on and see what typically happens after the fork. So once we have the fork, we have two clones of the same process and they are now going to start executing from the next statement. So the instruction after the fork system call is going to start getting executed in both the parent and the child. Um, and what are some typical options or some typical things that we do after the fork system call? So in the child process, we could use execs Unix, uh, Unix system call for transforming the process. So we said earlier that the child and the process are clones of each other, which means that the child process has the exact same uh, program in the exact same memory space. Uh, we can change that to do a different process, but we would have to use the exact system call for that. And if we use this exact system call in the child, it will replace the process's memory space with a completely new program. Um, one process can wait for another. So typically we uh, ask the parent to wait for the child to finish or terminate. Um, and while it is waiting, we remove it from the ready queue. Um, a process can kill itself by doing an exit. So it could be a successful exit or a not, a not so successful um, uh, process exit. Um, and we'll use the exit, exit call to indicate that. So a process can do that. Uh, another thing is one process can kill or abort another if it has the privilege to do it. Uh, processes can exchange data using the inter-process communications or to, to do uh, communication between the two processes, which is one of the services that is provided by the operating system. So wait, kill, abort, exit, uh, or probably the most useful in this is the child using an exec um, to do something else, a new program. So let's try to see how that new code using exec can uh, be uh, put into place in this diagram that we have been looking at. So initially we start off with the same parent process. So all the way on the left, you have a parent process that is executing with a unique integer uh, process ID is indicated as X. Uh, at some point, it has a fork system call and the fork system call, no argument, and it returns the value I. Uh, at that moment, two processes are now spawned. One is the parent process. And the way I know this is a parent process is because I is not zero. It did not return the value zero. And I know that this is a child process because it returned the value one, zero. Uh, over here, we are assuming that the new child has the process ID uh, Y, which is different from X. And the child now has an option to continue executing whatever the instructions were in the parent, or if we could use the exec system call to replace the complete program. So if we do use the exec system call here, then the process ID remains as is. So it was Y here. So we don't create a new process. We just replace the program. So process ID remains the same. Still the return value is zero. However, the program space, the memory space has a new code to execute. So it will start instruction, start executing the instructions completely, uh, all, all uh, so restarts instructions of the new program that can be done using the exec. And in the meanwhile, 
parent also has a few options. It can use exit to successfully terminate or it can um, use wait until uh, we wait for the child to terminate um, or finish execution. Um, and we can also use kill. Now let's take a look at some examples over here. Um, we, are, we have a main function um, that has a poke system call. So as you can see here, let's see, at this moment, we are saying PID is of integer type and we are uh, calling the folk system call and the moment the current process main executes that folk system call we get two processes that are currently going to execute one is say the parent the other is the child and they are going to right now be both be trying to execute the same next instruction the child will have, of course, a, a, a different uh, process ID compared to the parent. Uh, PID is the return code. PID is the return code of the folk system call. So for the child, it is going to be zero. For the parent, it is going to be non-zero. So since both the child and the parent are both concurrently executing the same process because they are clones of each other, they are right now pointing to the same uh, same instruction so they are checking for PID the return value return code if it is a zero which it is going to be for the child then we know that it's going to be a child process and then we can pass a, a string argument child to another process called do work which is written at a different place here and after the child uh, goes through uh, the do work process we can um, successfully uh, exit out by using the exit zero uh, system call. So that's a successful termination of the child. In the meanwhile, while child is doing all of that, what is happening in the parent? Parent was still pointing at the same instruction here. It checked for the PID value. Uh, the process ID was not zero for the parent. So it jumped down to uh, the else command here where the process ID is not zero, indicating that it's a parent process. So we are now passing the string literal of parent to the same uh, process do work. And then once we do that, we are simply waiting for the child to exit. And once, we, once our child exits, we are going to uh, do a return zero, which means that it is a successful execution of the parent program. So that's, that's how the, uh, the folk system call works and how you would uh, check for the return value and execute two different things in the child and proce uh, the parent process. Uh, note that we could completely you have a different um, instruction, uh, a, a different program in the child by using exec, which we will look at in this next example. So this is an example where we have a fork as well as an exec system call. So we have a main process over here, which is uh, passing arguments of argc and argv. Argc is your argument count. Argv is uh, essentially a one dimensional vector of strings here. Uh, it's a pointer. Um, it's a pointer variable to a one dimensional vector of strings. Um, and inside the main uh, program, we have uh, an integer type for PID. And then we are using args as a pointer variable to a character data type with two string literals. And then we have a folk system call right uh, in the next line here. So the same thing is going to happen. Uh, we are going to have two uh, processes now, one being the parent, one being the child, and they are both pointing now to the to the next instruction. So I'm going to move it down here for both of them. And they have their own process IDs, but the return value is going to be different. So return value for the child is going to be zero. The return value for the parent is going to be non-zero. And because they are both, so let's go through the parent uh, process first. So what is the parent going to do when it is at this point? 
is going to check for the PID. The return code is non-zero for the parent. So it's going to go down here, indicate that it's a parent process, it's going to print up a not, not a problem, and then continue executing the uh, instructions that are written at the at, uh, later on inside the main function. Um, what is the child going to do? Well, the child is going to use uh, exec v to completely replace the contents of the child process. And as you can see, we are uh, using the, the new program via is essentially a compiled output of your C compiler. Um, args s zero is uh, assigned the string literal of dot slash a dot out. So that's essentially a path to uh, the, the, the file, uh, which is the compiled output. So it's an executable. So if you want to uh, run this particular program, uh, we are uh, uh, giving that as argument uh, args of zero. And the next value, which is the, the last value here, is the null pointer. So exec v, which is the next statement here, causes the current process to abandon the program that it is currently running. So right, right now we are here. It is going to abandon the program that it is running and start running the program in the file path. And the file path right now is pointing to the compiled output of a different uh, C compiler. So it's a different executable for which we are passing the file path as well as uh, args s, which is a one dimensional uh, vector of strings. Those strings are uh, the file path followed by the null pointer. So the child process is going to do all of that and now it's in it's executing the uh, the completely different uh, program so that's an example of using folk and exec system calls okay uh, now i believe you are ready to do the class activity for today